Good evening, everyone. It is May 20th. Um, is it Wednesday? Yeah, it's Wednesday. I did not remember. Um, it is Wednesday, May 20th. Without confirmation tonight, I'm not remembering. So let us begin in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Almighty God, grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning and, the truth at, and your truth at the close of the day. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Holy and gracious God, I confess that I have sinned against you this day. Some of my sin I know, the thoughts and words and deeds of which I am ashamed, but some is known only to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I ask forgiveness. Deliver and restore me that I may rest in peace. By the mercy of God, we are united with Jesus Christ in whom we are forgiven. And in Christ's name, I declare that forgiveness to you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We not rest now in the peace of Christ and rise in the morning to serve. I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 8, 38-39. And for our song today, we will be hopefully here, let's see if I can pick it up, listening to Amazing Grace played by Dan. I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 8. For our time now, there's a second here. For our devotion from a Restless Soul by Henry Nouwen, Meditations on the Road. We continue with a sh little short snippet today about baggage. Do you have any baggage? 
<laughs> I think we all do, right? So let's kind of retrace our steps a little bit and then see how this fits in there. Nowen was no stranger to depression and fatigue, it admits. He would spend the next 35 years of life trying to balance travel and tiredness, a restlessness connecting not only to his ongoing search for God, but also for the pen perennial quest for personal intimacy and belonging. It is generally accepted that Nowen carried too much emotional baggage around with him. This too was mirrored in his own traveling style. Three months before his death, he remarks, I keep wondering why I take so much luggage with me. I am always determined to travel light, but I always end up with more suitcases than I can carry. When I arrived in Chipful, I realized that I wouldn't be able to carry all my bit luggage alone. At the airport, as I was going down the escalator with my loaded luggage cart, all my suitcases fell off, tumbling down the moving steps. I nearly fell over them. It's a sabbatical journey. So what, what kind of travel are, traveler are each of you? <laughs> that are listening to this right now. Um, I've kind of been all over the place on this. I was the girl who would bring so many books because I didn't know what kind of mood I would be in in order to choose the one I would read next. And I couldn't leave the one I was in the middle of home. I had to bring another three options and just in case I could um, read whatever I wanted to read next. My daughter has inherited that from me as well. Um, I love books and they're heavy. <sighs> but I also am one that has traveled. Um, I've noticed that when I traveled to the Middle East for five and a half months, I packed almost the same amount as when I go away for a week or two weeks. Um, the essentials and what going through those and knowing that you'll have to wash or that you'll have to maybe purchase some others as the weather changes. I also know that, and I believe I mentioned this before, I went to Guatemala um, in 2004 with one backpacker bag. And I came up seven years ago yesterday with three people and a whole container, like a semi-container, a small one, but a semi-container of stuff. And we had been sending up suitcases in 50 pound increments of, uh, with delegations that they had extra suitcases and we would pay the $50 baggage fee and weigh them to a hair with a, a pound of coffee in there at the end, just Arasia's favorite coffee, because he was gonna miss it, so that they could take out a pound of coffee if they were a pound overweight to avoid the excess baggage weight charge. So I became very good for a while there at boxing up my life in 50 pound increments. It was part of the catharsis of, um, and how I kind of dealt with the fact that I was leaving a place where we thought we would be for the rest of our lives that we thought um, we, we have places to bury ourselves in Guatemala, but God had other plans. And that at time was something that I was angry about, relieved, happy, frustrated, sad, frozen. And all of those different emotions kind of ended up being channeled into packing suitcases of baggage. Um, so you could say that there was maybe some emotional baggage that got packed along with it as well. But one thing we've also taught all of the delegations that came down, and, and I, I have shared this, but I think it's worth sharing again, is that you can bring your luggage out of the, the um, airport, but leave your baggage behind. Leave all of the preconceived notions that you have about what poverty is, about what indigenous people's stories are, or what people who have suffered through a civil war would be like, or 
um, what it means to be a church, what it means to be a missionary, what it means to be a Christian even. Um, all of those preconceived notions and um, baggage really that we have so often in our culture of um, residents that the gift of missionary work and short-term mission work especially is that all most of those preconceived notions just don't apply and you're so much out of your comfort zone that you're able because of God I think to see and to be with people in a new way and so when Henry Nouwen talks about not even being able to carry his luggage alone oh it's so true isn't it and can you just imagine that loaded cart flying down a escalator in an airport suitcases everywhere when people are harried and rushing and worried and then almost falling over them so what do you need to bring forward what is luggage what are things that bring life or that are necessary for the journey ahead and what is simply a burden what is something that you're just schlepping around not knowing why anymore and it has become baggage and then also what are you thinking hmm. and also know that the baggage of sin and our brokenness is what Christ takes from us. It is, I don't even know if I put it under emotional or physical baggage, it's like soul baggage. And that is something that Christ deals with for us and allows us to rest and allows us to see and allows us to experience in this journey that we have ahead of us, in front of us, within us, around us. And it is truly a blessing that Christ does that for us. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands I commend my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, the God of truth. Into your hands I commend my spirit. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Into your hands I commend my spirit. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ and asleep we may rest in peace. Now, Lord, you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people, Israel. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ and asleep we may rest in peace. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Listen to my cry. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. In righteousness, I shall see you. When I awake, your presence will give me joy. O oh Lord, support us all the day long of this troubled life until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes and the busy world is hushed and the fever of life is over and our work is done. Then in your mercy grant us safe lodging and a holy rest and peace at the last. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our amen. Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Now in peace, I will lie down and sleep. 
You alone, O God, make me secure. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.